Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, if you are a recurring viewer or a subscriber of my channel, thank you so much for your continued support. I really hope you are all doing well and staying warm. Uh, here where I am, it is quite cold today. I am enjoying it, but it is very cold and very windy. So it is a day to be inside and reading, which I have no complaints with whatsoever. Uh, today, I wanted to go over my reading week and uh, talk about a couple of the books that I finished reading, a couple of the books that I listened to in audio form, and then what I am currently reading, as well as a single book book haul. Um, so starting off with the audiobooks that I listened to, I listened to two audiobooks this week. Uh, the first was Everyday Life in Medieval London by Tony Mount, narrated by Anne Flosnick. And I really enjoyed this. It's a very short look at sort of everyday life in medieval London, as the title suggests. Um, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Ian Mortimer's A Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval England. I felt that it was a little bit shallower, not quite um, as insightful in terms of those sort of nitty gritty details of everyday life. Uh, but it was nonetheless a very enjoyable listen. And so I would recommend it for that alone. Uh, then I listened to The Domestic Revolution by Ruth Goodman, narrated by Jennifer M. Dixon. And this is essentially a history of the use of coal. And while it may not sound super exciting when phrased in that way, this was an incredibly interesting book. Uh, Ruth Goodman is an infectious writer, incredibly enthusiastic about her subjects. And so it's just a pleasure to listen to her writing. And um, the Domestic Revolution, it goes into a lot more than just the history of coal or the use of coal. It touches a lot on the Industrial Revolution. It, it touches a lot on the industrialization of um, sort of domestic work and the way that those two avenues affected each other. So really fascinating stuff. Uh, then moving into uh, physical books completed, the first was The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. And this is one that I hauled recently. I wasn't sure what I was going to think of it going into it. It's sort of outside of my genre comfort zone, being a little bit more dystopian, a little bit more science fiction than I usually read. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I thought that the organization was a little confusing at the beginning, just with the stories jumping back and forth and jumping by such large uh, time gaps by hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but once I got to about the 60-65% mark, I was absolutely hooked and could not put it down. Um, then I read uh, The Wreck of the Whale Ship Essex by Owen Chase, uh, the first mate of the ship. Uh, this is one that I have been wanting to read for a while, haven't read it, and then I saw it at the local bookstore yesterday, picked it up. Uh, this is the text that Nathaniel Philbrick used for his book in the heart of the sea, which I read and reviewed, I believe it was earlier last year. And this is also the source material or some of the source material that Herman Melville used for his writing of Moby Dick. And that is the main reason why I picked it up and wanted to read it was to have sort of more of an insight into what was some of the material that was possibly going through Melville's mind at the time of writing uh, Moby Dick. As far as a recount of the Essex whale ship disaster, I still personally find Nathaniel Philbrick's In the Heart of the Sea the most interesting and the most enticing just because you're, you have about three to 400 pages with his book to really get into the story, whereas this is right at 100 pages, so it feels really, really quick and it glances over so many of the most pivotal moments. Of course, you could say with this being sort of an eyewitness account and maybe even more accurate, but Nathaniel Philbrick's book definitely felt much more engaging. Um, then going on to what I am currently reading, I am currently reading two books. Uh, the first is Moby Dick, and it is a reread for me. I read it for the first time last year and absolutely loved it the first time. And then this time around, I'm reading it for Classics and Company 2024. This is the first book slated on the reading list. And so I'm trying to read some Moby Dick related books as well. So I have The Whale Ship Essex and I have a couple other books up on my reading queue um, that sort of deal with uh, the subject of whaling and then sort of with the, just with the maritime history of this period. Um, then I am reading Simon Heffer's The Age of Decadence, 
A History of Britain, 1880 to 1914. And this is an absolute brick of a book. It is, I think, right around a thousand pages. And this is one that I purchased, I think it was two or three years ago, and it's just been sitting on my shelf, just not being picked up at all. And so I finally decided that it was time to read it. Um, and I am really enjoying it so far. I am right around a hundred pages in, and it is incredibly detailed. And from what I can tell, the organization is essentially t tackling every element of British society and culture from 1880 to 1914. It's very much a social history, which I really prefer. So it goes into great detail about the history of the of the population, uh, as sort of the majority of the population. So it's not just focusing on the monarchy. It's not just focusing. It's not just focusing on the aristocracy, but really going into a very broad detail on life for everyone, which I greatly appreciate. Um, okay, so that is everything that I listened to and everything that I read. Now for the single book book haul. And I'm very excited for this because I was sent, uh, this book was sent to me by uh, by a, a publishing company that is promoting it for the author uh, for a potential uh, reading and review, which I'm really excited about. And that is The Middle Generation by M.B. Zucker. And this is a historical fiction novel. I'll get the cover right there. This is a historical fiction novel about John Quincy Adams and the Monroe Doctrine. So right up my alley. I'm super excited for this. Um, I have not read this yet, uh, but I'm going to hopefully start into it this week. I don't know if I'll be finishing it this week, but I do want to at least start it this week. And then um, hopefully I will be able to talk more about it next week, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you would like. Particularly, I would love to know what you're reading. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Bye for now and happy reading.